for the June 2023 exam. What current issues are relevant for you have already been provided to you by Fintram in terms of, you know, we'll also touch upon the group accounting, the consolidation piece. Always there in the exam is a group accounting. You would always see a question in relation to this in the exam um, that this is something that examiner expects from you as far as the SBR exam is concerned. He wants you to apply the ethical and the professional principles to various dilemmas and issues that you are observing in the exam. And there is one question that is always there in the exam in relation to this. Hi guys, good morning. Uh, I just wanted to bring a slide over here before I really... Yeah, we can see it now. Can you see it now? Yes. All right, all right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, welcome, welcome to the... Uh, ACC strategic business reporting orientation for the upcoming upcoming exam. Um, I do have an agenda today in terms of, you know, what I really want to take you through and of course discuss on in terms of, you know, what all would be the coverage areas. But before I really go in there, uh, just wanted to have a sense check. How many of you uh, are giving uh, uh, the ACC exam or ACC professional exam for the first time? Anybody who wants to share? You can also chat if you would like. Amandi, Prohan, Harleen, have you given any of the uh, ACCA professional exam earlier as in any other exam? Or this is the first one? Okay, no problem. So, so I, I tell you, you know, why I asked that question is because many of the times since many of the folks are giving their first exam as the strategic business reporting exam, the first and the foremost thing that they need to be aware of is the exam uh, modality in terms of you know how the exam would be tested in ACCA. So in ACCA, we have the computer-based uh, exams and you need to be prepared for hitting the reporting exam into a you know onto a computer framework, which is very much different to what we have seen in India and of course, you know, what we have seen in the exams that you would have already given. Because any of the accounting exam or reporting exam in India, we have not gone into the automated format or the computer-based format. So the reason I wanted to highlight was that if you're giving your strategic business reporting as your first exam of the ACC professional level, and you have not given any of the ACC exams earlier, or you have really, like, you know, you are a qualified CA, you just joined, and you're, you're choosing SBR to be your first exam, the first and the foremost thing that you need to be aware of is how the CVE environment works. So this is only for the newcomers, for the folks who are used to giving the ACC exams, there is no, no, no news for you. You can very well go and hit the exam the way you have been going. But I just wanted to highlight this because many of the times we have seen students coming who are giving the uh, professional level exam for the first time. They struggle in the exam. So just thought to highlight that if that is the case, you need to be really be careful with that. All right, moving on, you know, what we intend to cover today, what I had in my mind was that let me just run you through in terms of, you know, what all uh, are the components of this exam, what kind of an uh, exam pattern that you would, should be expected uh, or you should be working for in, you know, as, as you're preparing for this exam. I do want to, tie, you know, touch upon the capability that ACC wants you to demonstrate in the exam and towards the end, we'll cover on the, uh, you know, the course journey that we have for you in terms of, you know, what is there for you uh, when you, of course, you know, run that through with us in terms of, you know, what all you'll be doing and how you should be really covering your journey uh, before you really hit your exam. So we'll be covering all of that today. And that's what I intended to cover uh, primarily from the from the June 2023 exam standpoint. All right. Moving on, I just wanted to cover, you know, the syllabus area first. I think this is the basic thing that we all need to know from the standpoint of knowing that what exactly the strategic business reporting exam is all about. Many of the times, you know, we, we are not giving due emphasis to all of the areas or the, or the syllabus areas of the exam. And that is the reason I wanted to bring this to your forefront that this is what ACCA syllabus areas are. And of course, you can go to, onto the ACCA website, and go on to these you know, student study resources. You can download the, the um, 
the syllabus area from there in terms of you know what would be relevant for you there are syllabus area a to g that are there uh, you know that will be relevant for you for the june 2023 exam the first one starts off with the ethical and the professional principles wherein you would be covering various basic ethics that you need to demonstrate as a reporting guy of, of an organization so those ethics are more to do with the fact that you are disclosing you are demonstrating the behavior that is expected from a controller from a cfo of any organization and that's what we'll be covering from the standpoint of principles that you really need to learn and demonstrate over a period of time even after you qualify as an acc and of course work in the industry for a longer period of time We'll be learning the ethics and, of course, the professional principles to start with. This is sure shot, sure shot tested in the exam. You would always see a question coming from the ethical and professional principles. And we'll come upon in a while in terms of, you know, what the what the expectation from the exam is. We'll come upon that in a while. Then we'll cover upon the financial reporting framework. That is basically the conceptual framework that lays behind the IFRSs. So we'll, we'll touch upon, you know, how the conceptual framework has worked uh, you know, from the standpoint of IFRS, because we know we'll be learning IFRSs as we'll be progressing in this in this journey. But what has gone behind the IFRSs from the conceptual framework or the backbone standpoint, that is something that we'll be learning in section B. Towards when when we move on to the section C, section C is basically, you know, I would say section C and D are basically the plethora of the IFRSs that we'll be covering. Will and I do have a slide that I'll that I'll I'll touch upon in a while that would demonstrate you kind of IFRSs that are relevant from the SBR standpoint, and that's what we'll be covering in 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 section C and section D. Uh, there are various IFRSs that they want you to demonstrate the knowledge of, and that's what we'll be covering in the section C and D. Section E is the interpretation of the financial statement for different stakeholders. Now this is something that you really need to learn and evolve when you're sitting for the strategic business reporting exam for the folks who are coming from the financial reporting background as in who have already given the fr exam of of acca this is going to be a change for you because as of now what you are used to or what you have been doing is that you're more uh, concentrating and demonstrating your skills on the calculation and the knowledge of the ifrss however when it comes to strategic business reporting exam the skill that you need to demonstrate is on the interpretation front, is on the discussion front, is on the suggestion front that you really need to do, that you know the IFRS, you know how it is to be done, then you're seeing an industry, you're seeing a financial, and then you're interpreting what is really happening over there, and then you're commenting on that, discussing on that, suggesting on that, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be a change that would be happening, and that's what you really need to learn, and that's what will be, of course, taking you through as we go forward in this journey. Uh, the um, I would say the uh, syllabus area F or the section F of the exam is the current issue. Now, this is something that you would have not have seen. Even the folks who have given the financial reporting exam, they do not, do not have current issues over there. And of course, folks who are giving this exam for the first time, they really need to know that in the SBR exam, there is always one or at times two question that really comes on the various current issues. Now, current issues are the areas wherein there is an issue that is being observed in the industry, observed in any kind of, uh, I would say, uh, not only industry, but observed in any kind of domain that you're really working for. For example, uh, it can be a leather industry, it can be a um, car manufacturing industry, it can be, you know, uh, let's say, a construction industry and so on and so forth. So there can be industry-wide issues and then can there can be domain-wise issues or the concept-wise issues. For example, there is, a, there is a need of an IFRS that is to come, let's say, from the, uh, from the uh, standpoint of industries that are being hit by COVID, just taking an example. So there is a need of an IFRS amendment, there is a need of an IFRS introduction and so on and so forth. So there can be various current issues, both on the conceptual side and of course, on the industry side, you really need to know those kind of current issues. And, you know, ACCA comes up with various current issues that are relevant for a particular exam. For example, in for the June 2023 exam, what current issues are relevant for you have already been provided to you by FinTram in terms of, you know, what you really need to know from the current issue standpoint that has already been there. That's what you really need to know because one question or at times two questions are coming from the current issues. He would directly or indirectly ask you the current issues that you don't know. Do, do you really know? I'm sorry. Do you really know it? 
do you really understand it can you uh, interpret a current issue and of course suggest what is really happening because these are the areas wherein you may not have an ifrs currently running so you may not have an ifrs that is there or that is uh, somewhat already issued so there can be a current issue which is going to be an ifrs down the line so he would test you that you know do you really know what is really going on in the pipeline do you really know what is really going on in the industry and so on and so forth? So that is what he'll be testing you over there. And last but not the least is the employability and the technology skills. This is nothing but the computer-based exam. He really wants you to learn the computer-based examination stand, you know, framework. And that's what he'll be testing you in the section G. So this is what we'll be covering more from the standpoint of syllabus series, let's say from A to G, what all is relevant from the syllabus series standpoint is something that we have already done or seen in terms of you know what we'll be covering as we go forward if i really go you know ahead and of course circle back in terms of you know kind of ifrs that we'll be covering um in the whole curriculum of the strategic business reporting exam this is the list of ifrs my friend and of course i have not given the ifrs number that is not relevant what is relevant is that you knowing what is going to be happening in these IFRS. We'll be touching upon the conceptual framework, as I, just, as I just said. We'll be touching upon the presentation of the published financial statements in terms of, you know, more of understanding the presentation issues that, that we really go through. We also want to touch upon the non-current asset, the tangible assets that would really sit on and, of course, uh, be there onto your, onto your financial statements. We'll be touching upon the intelligent, you know, intangible assets there is a full-fledged IFRS that really talks on the intangible and, of course, the impairment. That is, again, something which is very heavily tested in the exam. We would be touching on the revenue accounting. No exam you would see which would not have a question of revenue. There would certainly be something or the other that will be happening from the revenue accounting standpoint. That will be there in the exam. We'll also touch upon the accounting of the foreign currencies over here. That's something you really need to, of course, some somewhat brush up because many of the times foreign currency is the ask of the question. Inventory, agriculture and changes in accounting policy, prior year estimates, prior period items and so on and so forth is something again that we'll be covering. Lease accounting is the other one. Accounting for taxes, earning per share. Again, one of the heavily tested areas in the exam and the folks who have already given the FR exam, they would have seen that too because these all somewhat somewhere they would have learned in the financial reporting exam but of course you know in the strategic business reporting exam we'll be going you know three or four steps ahead on that and of course building that knowledge that you already have and of course taking that further and to that point you know one thing that i really want to mention many of the times students really comes up and ask that you know i'm you know, I'm giving this for the first time. I have not given the financial reporting exam. So does that, does the session really covers in terms of, you know, what is really needed from the standpoint of having that base of financial reporting? Answer is absolutely yes. The sessions are being crafted and drafted in a way that all of the basics that are there from the financial reporting standpoint is duly covered. So you really don't have to be worried that you have given the financial reporting exam or not. Everything that you really need from the strategic business reporting exam standpoint is very well covered, including the basics that you really need to know. Is that clear, guys? I just want to do a sense check that, you know, and of course, you know, it really keeps me motivated also that I'm, am I, am I audible, guys? You know, I'm, are you with me? You know, I hope you're not losing on. And of course, I hope... Uh, uh, you're not losing on my voice, my videos, anything, anything, guys, you know, anybody who can confirm that will be really great. I just want to do a sense check in between so that I just, just don't keep speaking and you guys are not listening. It's yeah, loud and clear. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, we'll be covering the financial instruments, derivative and hedge accounting in the strategic business reporting. We'll also touch upon the employee benefits and the share-based payments somewhat, somewhere, uh, you would have already seen this uh, because employee benefit is a very common term. We'll also touch upon the segment reporting related party disclosures. Uh, you know, we also want to be talking about the the reporting for the SMEs. Again, that is something which is uh, which is very uh, I would say different or a or a um, uh, new thing for you. That may be a new thing for you. We'll also touch upon the group accounting, the consolidation piece. Again, one question that is that you know that is always there in the exam is of group accounting. You would always see a question in relation to this in the exam. We'll also touch upon the associates, joint ventures, you know, or the arrangements, and of course the group disposals. Disposal is something you know that is not there um, to an extent in NFR. So we'll be you know touching upon that in detail over here in terms of you know how would you be doing an accounting when you are disposing of a subsidiary 
or a joint venture and so on and so forth changing the you know in the group structure is also something that is that is very well there you know in in the strategic business reporting exams so we'll be touching upon that too and towards the end we'll talk on the cash flows whether it is the individual or a company level cash flow or a group cash flow both of that would be covered then comes the analysis and the interpretation now this is something you would always always see in the exam in some way or the other <clears throat> you would really want you to analyze things interpret the things and then comment on the way you would want so you would always see a question or many of the questions talking on your interpretation skills we will also talk on and i have already spoken on this the professional and the ethical duty of an accountant we will we'll be talking in detail on this and of course towards the end we'll be touching upon various current issues that are relevant from your examination standpoint is that clear guys yes sir. now that's something you know i would say these are like broad ifrs that i really wanted to touch upon and of course tell you that you know this is something that you should be looking forward to as you're progressing and of course doing you know these sbr uh, exam curriculum as we go forward guys we will see uh, you know the capabilities that are expected in the exam now of course you know you can see these capabilities very well written um, on the acca website you know this is certainly there um, that this is something that examiner expects from you as far as the sbr exam is concerned he wants you to apply the ethical and the professional principles to various dilemmas and issues that you are observing in the exam and there is one question that is always there in the exam in relation to this wherein he'll give you a situation and you know let me give you an example he'll give you a situation and that situation can be uh, that a uh, let's say a transactional issue or a strategic issue is being discussed in an organization which is leading to a call that is to be taken uh, for the implementation of xyz ifrs in a particular way so CFO has taken a call that this IFRS needs to be applied in this way. And what would be required from you is that, is that right? Is it something that you really need to you know, talk on? Is it, is it something that you should, be, um, you should be suggesting as a different approach? Now that's where you really need to see that, you know, what kind of ethical and principal issues that are there in terms of decision that a CFO has taken. If there is an ethical dilemma, if there is an ethical issue, then you need to suggest that this is the issue that is there and this is what he should be doing in this kind of situation. What he's doing may not be the right one. That's where examiner wants you to, uh, you know, uh, show the capability that you understand a, a professional and an ethical issue and you're able to contemplate that, understand that, consume that and give back the examiner that this is what that is needed in this kind of a scenario what cfo is doing what the ceo is doing is not right so you have to be very smart in terms of you know understanding situation understanding what the cfo is doing and then commenting on in terms of you know what one should be doing in that kind of a scenario if i move on to the other one you really have to understand the appropriateness of various financial reporting frameworks uh, in terms of you know what has really gone behind and you know, you know conceptual framework that as i said is is a heavily tested area in the exam and the more you understand that from the standpoint of knowing that you know how a conceptual framework really helps an ifrs to really be there uh, the more you're able to comment on that you know has what is being applied or done is right or not so you, you really have to think through or learn the conceptual framework have it in your blood and then run past that on to the situation that is giving in the give that is given in the exam and tell the examiner this is what the conceptual framework really says you really have to apply the professional judgment in the reporting of the financial performance of a range of entities now this is something you know i i somewhat somewhere said that you know you are not there in the sbr exam for the purpose of calculation you're not there you're not you're not going to make, be making huge amount of calculations over here but you'll be applying your judgment on the reporting of financial performance of entities considering all the knowledge that you have of the ifrss in your mind so you may not have to calculate that but you may have to talk on the treatment that you have done the uh, adjustments that you have done or have happened you have to really comment on that that is that right is that wrong one should be doing this one should be doing that this is not the right way of doing it this is the right way of doing it and so on and so forth so you really have to apply your professional judgment there and that's what uh, is the need of the exam because he wants you to demonstrate that capability you really need to uh, you know uh, show the 
I would say the, the capability of preparing the group group uh, statement, financial statement of group entities. While uh, what I've seen over a period of time is that generally a uh, financial statement of group of entities is already given. You really have to pick some of the schedules and prepare that and comment on the overall scenario. So you, while the knowledge is of course needed, but the question that I generally see in the exam is that you do not get a full fledged question on preparing uh, a financial statement, but you may get it. Then they're not stopping any which way is that. Interpretation of the financial statement for different stakeholders, again, you know, is something we have already discussed that you really need to interpret. Then, you know, coming on the, the communication or the impact of changes in and or potential changes in the accounting regulation, which is nothing but the current issue. So the examiner wants you to learn the current issues and demonstrate that how you communicate that, how you're able to make the other person understand that and so on and so forth. And towards the end, as I said, you have to demonstrate the knowledge of the computer-based environment. All right, is that clear? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Now, coming on to the, you know, strategic business reporting exam format, you know, I really want to touch upon this. I'm sure, you know, you, you, the, those who are, have started preparing for it, they would know it. There is always, uh, uh, you know, two questions in section A and two in section B. Section A question, first one is always a consolidation issue question or the, that can be, you know, wherein you have to do the consolidation and then comment, or there can be a scenario when consolidation has already happened, but you need to discuss, suggest, or recommend on something. This question is generally of 30 marks. So it is huge in terms of weightage. Group accounting is going to be a game changer for you. The second question that really comes up in the exam is of the ethics issue. You know, we have already discussed that in terms of, you know, that examiner always tests the ethics in the exam. He always wants you to know in terms of, you know, uh, what has gone wrong or what may go wrong in this kind of a treatment. And then you really have to answer that, that, you know, this is the right way of doing it. So something may not be right and you need to recommend the right way of correcting it or doing it. That is something that is always there in the exam. And this question is always of 20 marks. So 30 marks for consolidation and 20 marks for ethics gives 50 marks weightage to section A. Section B is nothing but the IFRS based section. You would always get two questions in this basis, different IFRSs. It can be lease, it can be revenue, it can be foreign exchange, it can be anything. Accounting for tax, earning per share, and you name it and you have it. So different IFRSs are being tested in these two questions. But one thing that you really need to be always, always have it at the back of your mind is that you always have a current issue tested in section B. They generally have a question that is testing the recent current issue and that's what you should be really be aware of 25 marks 25 marks each uh, question having two questions in section b gives you 50 marks so 50 plus 50 gives you 100 marks of section a and section b together all right <clears throat> moving on to the four professional marks that are there uh, in the in the uh, spr exam spr exam is of 3 hour 15 minutes you know, containing four questions and all are compulsory. There is no choice on that. Uh, in section A, as I said, there are two questions and two professional marks are awarded for applying the ethical principles and recommending the appropriate act, you know, action. So effectively, he really gives you two marks extra if you're really um, thinking rightly about an ethical principle and recommending the right action there and then. In section B, there are two professional marks that are being awarded if you are really able to demonstrate that you really understand the conceptual framework from the from the overall IFR standpoint and how is that important to various financial users, including the investors, including the financiers, and so on and so forth. So there are four marks that are being awarded in SPR exam in terms of how you're really answering a question of ethical principle in section A and of course a question of conceptual framework in section B. If I really go forward in terms of, you know, what is our approach and what is that that you would be doing with us, you know, as you may go forward, the people who have already received the sessions, they would understand this any which ways, because the way the, the FinTram sessions are being being worked out, you know, you have, you have you have given the syllabus area sessions. So all of the syllabus areas, the IFRSs that we, that we just spoke, you know, all of those IFRSs are being crafted in a, in a more logical sequence. So we have, you know, crafted a logical sequence for you in terms of, you know, how one should be learning all of these syllabus areas. And you have, you know, all the sessions being, being, um, 
uh, somewhat dedicated to some specific IFRSs, and that's how you'll be covering all of the syllabus areas, uh, you know, with us. Once you've done the syllabus areas, my friend, then we have given you the revision bootcamp or video question marathon, as you may want to call it. The revision bootcamp really covers the current issues in, in detail in terms of, you know, what all current issues are there. It really talks on various conceptual questions, my friend, that we really want you to excel on. You know, the more you'll excel on, the, the, the you know, the more you'll understand. And of course, um, I would say somewhat be able to answer it and demonstrate the knowledge that is needed in the SPER exam. Then we'll be covering the section A, you know, pardon, you know, there is no objective type questions over here, you know, pardon, it's a type error. So we'll be covering section A questions, you know, and when I say section A, we'll be covering both, my friend, we'll be covering the uh, uh, the overall questions on the group accounting, and then we'll also be covering the questions on the ethics over here. Then we comes on, you know, we'll come on to the section B, and in section B, we cover various IFRS's question, my friend, in terms of, you know, really giving you uh, you know, our two cents in terms of, you know, what we believe can be tested in the exam. So you have, it's it's basically, you know, I would say video exam kit, my friend, for you, that really gives you an understanding of various questions that are, that you know, that are there, uh, including the current issues and, of course, conceptual questions that we really, really want you to excel on. We will, we have also given you the CB exam demo, my friend, in terms of, you know, what you are training as you may want to call it, you know, that will help you in terms of, you know, really understanding and excelling on, you know, the CB as a, as a platform. We will also be giving you, you know, once you would reach, let's say, you know, May, I would say not say end, but May mid kind of uh, time frame, we'll be giving you a mock exam, my friend, wherein you would be getting a detailed performance review also in relation to it, just to ensure that you're not missing on that. And of course, not really uh, somewhat uh, um, uh, missing on the mistakes that you may do the exam. So this, this really helps you. Uh, covering yourself or understanding the various mistakes that you're doing and of course helps you really come up and of course cover up those areas from the examination standpoint you would also get you know the doubt or discussion like sessions like this you know when we will you know come upon periodically we'll talk on various things we'll talk on various questions and so on and so forth Now, that's pretty much my friend I wanted to talk on. You know, I just want to thank you. This is the number of Intram and, of course, you know, contact details that have been provided to you. Uh, I've also given my WhatsApp number over here in case you want to reach out to me, ask anything, you know, feel free. You know, we'll be more than happy to answer anything that you may have and we'll be happy to, you know, take on from there. That's pretty much, guys, I wanted to, you know, cover anything anyone may want to ask or talk on or any question that anyone has, you know, I'll be happy to answer it there and then. So, Pankaj, sir, this is Amandeep. I had a few questions. Uh, is it okay if I can ask them now? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. So, so, uh, so obviously, ACCA does have exemptions, and, and considering I'm a commerce graduate, so the first four papers are, are totally exempted. And then I'm a diploma in IFRS holder as well. Uh, so, uh, the FR paper also also gets exempted. Okay. Now, the key reason for me to join this particular session was also to kind of get a bit of a layout of, of what what a particular exam is, and then thanks so much for for kind of sharing uh, sharing on SBR. Uh, and as per my understanding, the SBR paper only comes in a bit later in the cycle uh, because I think there is a skill level, and then I'm sorry, I might not be saying it correctly uh, because I'm still kind of reading it through. So, so what I wanted to understand over here is uh, obviously throughout throughout the entire guidance, there are various. Uh, 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 various pacing around how uh, particular papers need to happen around or how anyone can can kind of club papers together or do papers individually. So considering where I am today, okay, uh, wherein uh, out of the 13 or 14 odd papers, uh, yeah, five of them are already part of the exemption. I wanted to understand from you if I have to cut, begin my ACCA journey today, okay, uh, with the exemptions obviously applied, what is the sequencing you you think is is appropriate? So uh, okay, um, might not be relevant for all of the folks over here, guys. But since Amandeep has asked it, I'll answer it right away. So Aman, uh, you know what? 
uh, what I have understood is that, you know, there are five exams that are exempted for you, which is like first four exams and then financial reporting, which yes. is for DPIFR, right? Yeah. So effectively, the exams that you really need to give is the FM, PM, audit mm -hmm. and uh, FM, PM, audit. And one more, right? Tax. Yes. So these are the four exams that you need to give, right? Mm -hmm. So if I, and again, then the professional level is SBR, SPL, and, you know, the choice of two that right. you need to make. If I really circle down, you know, the FM, FR, you know, let's say FM, PM, audit and tax. If you really want to ask about the sequence from me, you know, honestly speaking, uh, all of, all four of them are unrelated subjects. You know, had, had you giving, you know, had you been giving uh, FR, I would have told you that, you know, give, um, double A after that because FR many of the FR concepts are being tested in double A and that's what I would want you to start off with I think you should start off with double A because uh, you know since you've already given DIP IFR you know the various IFRS issues or you know IFRS areas you know at length in in double A there are many IFRSs that are being tested directly or indirectly so that would help you clearing your double A quickly that's how I see it now, after AA, you know, I think the exam that you should give, you can, you know, you can idly considering that this is this this whole year would be uh, having same tax provisions. So I would write, you know, write right away target the tax because I want to clear the tax basis this year regulations only. So I'll just go and sit for the tax and clear it. After tax, you know, you can choose out, you know, the the from FM and PM, you know, you can choose out any two subjects and any one that's absolutely fine. There is no right sequence as to which should come first. But if I were you, you know, my choice would be that I'll give FM first and then the PM. Because I think uh, um, my take is that I'm more, uh, you know, uh, I'm more okay with FM than PM. But if you're otherwise, if you're more okay with costing, then give PM first and then FM. But the right sequence for you would be double A and then um, tax and then, you know, FM and PM or whatever, PM or FM. Uh, that, that certainly helps. And, and sir, also wanted to check. Uh, so right now, obviously, this is a virtual training. But uh, are, are, is, is your organization running uh, uh, like face-to-face uh, uh, -face kind of classes or everything's going to be? We are planning for that, uh, uh, Amandeep. But right now, I can't give you uh, a certain date for it. We are planning for that. Okay, I, I think that that's all I wanted to ask at this particular moment. If something else comes up, I'll definitely. Right now, the sessions that we have are the blended ones. So, you know, which is like you know, you would certainly get uh, the the video based sessions, and you know, then some live sessions like like this. But if there is anything uh, that we will do on the, let's say on the uh, uh, face to face session side, then you know, we can confirm you the date as we go forward. Thanks, thanks, sir. Any any other point, guys? Anyone may have before I really wrap up. Any anybody, guys? Feel free, guys. You know this is just for you. So anything that you may have in your mind, we'll be happy to happy to answer. Guys, this is an opportunity to talk. Let's talk, right? Let's talk and you know resolve any doubts that you may have in your mind, my friend. You know, my this is just for you. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, this is Aman. Hi, Aman. Sir, uh, two months today. Oh, one Aman deep and then Aman. Okay. Hi, Aman. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to ask. Like, uh, I received an uh, like online session. So, uh, is it possible? Like, uh, if you are planning to arrange like uh, live sessions too, because um, like in like a recorded session. So, if I have any doubt, so it will be very difficult for me. Like. Uh, to make the flow like for future. So, so uh, I'm in the live you, session. You know, while we are planning for the face-to-face -face sessions, but that's not going to be happening that soon. It so if there is no face-to-face -face, like online like session, like live. We, so session. we do not have right now the online sessions. All we have is the, you know, video-based sessions that has been, that would have been provided to you. We are contemplating on on having the having the, the live or face to face sessions, but it's gonna take, as I said, time. I don't know how much. Maybe six months, maybe nine months. I don't know how much. Okay, thanks. 
but aman you know, uh, aman sorry you know just to aman just to tell you know just to share one thing with you uh, in case in case i don't know you know because we are still as i said contemplating and we are will very initial in that uh, initial stage in that if there is anything that we will have that will come up live we will be informing all our student any which ways okay thanks so it is not that we know it it's it's get it'll get started without informing you it'll never be okay thank you sir sorry somebody was asking something yeah uh, sir uh, prince the side yeah hi prince uh, sir uh, i've been working as a accounts receivable uh, manager and uh, i've done bba so i was looking for a course uh, to change uh, my domain within finance so i heard about uh, acca so i just want to know uh, i mean uh, what are the exams or uh, how much uh, exams i can get exemption uh, uh, when i can start and uh, that's all aman if you, sorry may i know your name please prince okay prince, yeah. prince if you can drop your uh, you know message uh, or you know whatsapp number to me then okay. i can ask uh, you know the acca uh, you know respective person to call you and explain you everything you know i may not be the right person to to really all right tell you the exemptions and everything you know those are the ones who are expert in this so they can okay. really tell you if you can drop your number you know on the chat with me i'll be okay. happy to pick this up and ask someone to you know from the acca uh, group to really call you and explain all of that sure definitely sir thank you vivek anybody else kavita anything that anyone have akriti come on guys why do i have to ask please speak if there is anything do call me right or as in talk uh, anybody from the fintram team if if they are there on you know on the on the chat or on on the call you know you can take the number of prince and uh, you know help him uh, you know with the acc group all right guys if there is nothing then we'll wrap up thank you very much for joining and i hope you know this this uh, orientation was somewhat somewhat helpful to you guys if you have any concerns any queries as i said you know you can i have given my whatsapp number over here you can reach out to me you know uh, or you can reach out to fintram you know they they'll be more than happy to help you in anything that you may have on to your mind thank you very much guys look forward and all the very best thank you sir